My name is Nadi Iyer. I'm a senior director of product management team. I work with Hugo. Uh, I am responsible for all things SD-WAN, uh, our core, pop build out, SD-WAN strategy, the infrastructure. Um, Hugo gave a, a big overview about, a uh, high level overview about Ariaka, what we do, right? I'm here to kind of take it, uh, peel the layers of the onion a little bit more, dig deeper, and really look at Ariaka, what are the three or four key components of Ariaka that drives our solution and strategy, right? Uh, one of the biggest pieces, uh, which is a differentiator for us, is the middle mile, right? And what is the middle mile, right? Uh, is the 40 plus POPs that Ariaka has all over the world that we've built. These are um, service POPs, as we like to call them. These are a full-fledged set of compute, storage, networking infrastructure that we have. And these are spread out all over the all over the world, right? So we are we like to say that we are within um, 15 to 30 milliseconds of 95 percent of the world's knowledge workers. So that's where we have strategically placed all our pops, right? So <clears throat> at the core of Ariaka's zero trust van that Hugo was alluding to is our um, is is this middle mile that we call, which is stitched together with a fully meshed set of pops. Uh, the other piece of Ariaka is the ANAPs that Hugo was referring to. ANAPs stand for Ariaka Network Access Point. These are the CPE devices that typically sit in your branch that connect over an IP2 tunnel to the closest Ariaka POP, right? And then, uh, so that's typically a very short hop because if you're in, let's say, San Jose, your, your, your branch is in San Jose, we have a POP in San Jose, so you build an IP2 tunnel to the closest Ariaka POP, and from there on, we traverse over the Ariaka middle mile, right? And that middle mile is really Ariaka's core differentiator when it comes to SD-WAN. Because, you know, there are a lot of industry solutions out there that just build a tunnel over the internet overlay solutions. We are a completely uh, uh, under, we don't oversubscribe the middle mile, first of all. So you get guaranteed latency. And uh, the biggest enemy for application performance is packet loss, latency, and jitter, right, over the internet. And that's exactly the problem Ariaka solves, especially for companies that have branches all over the world, when they need these connectivity to be consistent and reliable. And I'm gonna walk you through how we do that, right? So we have, uh, we have this POP-centric architecture. So these ANAPs not only connect your branch offices and headquarters, but we also can connect remote users who are working out of homes. We have a VPN solution, which, is based, which we call as private access, that helps connect. And who are you connecting to? You're typically connecting to your data center, private data center, which is in your headquarters or a separate colo facility, or you're connecting to IaaS or SaaS workloads. So we can offload our on-ramps. We have on-ramps from our POPs to SaaS and IaaS as well. So that completes our entire uh, FlexCore strategy. And, and what I mean by FlexCore is our POPs are stitched together internally with each other over both layer two which is optimized for performance, right? So you have the full WAN optimization over it, or we also have them over layer three. So think about it as all these POPs can talk to one another over layer two, right, which is performance optimized, or over layer three, which is cost optimized. And that's what we refer to as our flex core solution, right? You're creating um, these tunnels to the closest POP. What does the redundancy or failover look like? If there's a loss of that pop, what does it look like to the customer for that device to fail over to another, the, the next nearest pop? Yeah, so we have high availability built into every aspect. There's high availability built into the CPE. So there could be a failure on the ANAP device, so we have HA solutions for that. There could be a failure in the link, that's, that's your ISP DIA circuit. We have failovers for that with typically dual redundant links. And you have failover for pop. The POP is typically a very resilient uh, set of thing. Uh, failure of a POP is a very, very rare occurrence. We haven't had one touch wood. Uh, but we, in case of that, we have POP HA, which is high availability for POP. So instead of building the tunnels to your, to your primary POP, which is the closest one, we also have the ability for you to build to another POP, right? And, which is okay. nearby. And just to piggyback off his question, what does bandwidth utilization look like on that? Is it kind of the same, or does it is like does one require a little more than the other? It's just kind of steady no matter which tunnel it goes over, like between both of them. Between between two pops? Yes. 
Yeah, the bandwidth utilization is is largely driven by what applications you're running, right? Okay. So if, if the, uh, the utilization is going to be the same. The only thing that's going to change is the is the incremental latency when you're when you're connecting from San Jose site to a San Jose pop, sure. right? As opposed to connecting to a Seattle pop, that last mile latency is going, to, is going to increase. Okay, it's going to be a, a small increase in that. Okay. But you have to look at the end to end. It's broken up into three legs, right? One is your immediate Ike V2 tunnel to the closest Ariaka pop, and then you're traversing the middle mile. So let's say you're talking from a branch in San Jose to a, uh, to another branch somewhere in Europe, right? So the middle mile is where you're you're going to get the maximum benefit by going over Ariaka core because this is a private core, right? It is not oversubscribed, so you're going to get that guaranteed latency uh, between across continents, across regions, right? So that's that's how that's clearly our differentiator. The, the flex core is is what uh, is that all Ariaka owned infrastructure? You're leasing it from other SPs. So Ariaka basically leases space and power from colo providers, right? So we basically go in there, rent some space from large colo providers such as Equinix and others, and we put our own equipment in there, our compute infrastructure, our storage infrastructure, our network infrastructure, switches, routers, everything, mm -hmm. and we basically run that. Um, and so then so, dark fiber between all those? And there's, there's dark fiber between the, we, we, we get wavelengths from tier one providers, uh, and these are you know, 10 gigs or more typically, right? With with multiple providers. So there's redundancy in case one provider gets a fiber cut. You're truly way. operating your own network. You're, You're not really borrowing something from Google and saying, no, no, you know, this, this is this is our backbone. This is yeah. this is our backbone. Okay. And this other piece of how, how does a customer visualize all of this is using the My Ariaka portal. The My Ariaka portal is the dashboard. The customer gets a login. As soon as we onboard a customer, they get a login, they log into the portal. And what they see is their entire network footprint. They can see their links, they can see their sites, they can see what's the latency between going from site A to site B. They can uh, they can see how what IaaS and SaaS providers they are connected to. Uh, they can see their remote users. They can see their security. So it's one stop shop, one stop portal to see all your entire network footprint, right? And we will we will of course be going through an in depth detail about our portal later on. Um, so this is this is our pop footprint today. So this is a global deterministic network. This is the one that gives Ariaka the true value differentiator of guaranteeing application performance from anywhere to anywhere all over the world, right? So if you see here, these pops are all over the world. This is about 40 pops currently, right? And you have uh, cities where we have more than one pop. So you know, uh, and and if you can see here, the footprint is is largely U.S., Europe, Asia, pa Asia Pac. And uh, our footprint in South America and Africa is, is very minimal today, but we're planning to grow that in the future. So what you'll see here uh, in the next slide is how we're planning to increase the POP footprint over the coming years. Over the next two years, we have a board approval to expand our POPs, nearly double the number of POP count, going all the way from 40 to 27 more POPs. So this is 40 POPs globally that you have today. Mm -hmm. And then how many different providers for cloud adjacent facilities are you using such as Equinix? We have uh, we have a lot lots of providers easily in in the in the close to double digit, right? Close to double digit providers. Yeah, because you know the same provider is not prevalent everywhere, so depending on which provider is stronger in a particular region, we pick we go with those providers. I was actually going to ask how you can handle the the well, the globe with only 40 pops. So it means that whatever is not in the pop uh, footprint that you have described here then is probably leased from another local provider so you can reach the customers or how do you cover what's currently not covered by the, the footprint you're, you have right now? So uh, our pop footprint today is uh, significantly matches what where our customers are. We typically tend to go with where our customers are. So if, for example, if a customer is is, is it a particular region, right? The, mm -hmm. the, for, let's take Europe for an example, mm -hmm. right? So we have about five POPs today in Europe, mm -hmm. right? And, and that covers significant chunks of sites that are all over Europe. Yeah. That being said, we are also expanding that in the coming years, right? Okay. So, yeah. So maybe one uh, thing to add is that the, it's the milliseconds which counts. So since the layer two POP, right, speed of light, so the only is the first mile, 
uh, in terms of the uh, of, of the milliseconds which count, right? So if you have in Europe smaller geography, you need less bobs, right? Obviously, you have uh, you have countries where within a country, you know, often people want within their country they want their own pop, but it has nothing to do with the milliseconds. It has to do with the borders it's of the our... country and the and the circuits they buy. By the way, we will supply you as well with the circuits if you want that. And, right? and, and not only that, okay. we also we have something called as cloud service extension. So we have one of our colo providers is Equinix. Equinix has a far bigger footprint than us. Mm -hmm. So we tend to, in regions where we don't have a physical pop presence, we can actually ride on their backbone to, to get to that facility. Mm -hmm. So that, that's what we call as cloud service extensions. That allows us to increase our footprint. So for example, going back to that Europe example, we have five pops, but we can technically service a lot more regions, countries and cities in Europe by riding over the colo provider's backbone. Uh, a couple of questions. First, about the extending through Equinix and their fabric. Um, mm -hmm. They don't provide SLAs to most people, right? And so how do you manage, you know, SLA and performance when you're having to extend via a non-LSLA based service? Like, how do you ensure your customers are getting the traffic that they should? And then the second question, I'll give you both right up front so you can answer them in any order you want to. I see several up there that are in China. And I know this is a very uh, challenging environment to build security products in. So I'm kind of curious how you guys are addressing that question and how you approach that. Yep, I'll address both of them. Uh, SLA question is something that I wanted to actually deep dive into. Uh, okay. How we do that. So you'll see a lot of screens, but how we were able to stand behind that five, nine SLAs that we provide today to our customers. Uh, with, with specific to that Equinix question, so we have what we call as uh, layer two circuits, right? So on layer two, we know exactly how much subscribe bandwidth a particular set of customers have bought from us. So we know that if we have, let's say 500 meg of subscribe bandwidth over the fabric between two regions, between two cities, metros, we actually know that only a percentage of that is actually subscribed by our customers. So we have, we, we never oversubscribe that layer two bandwidth. So we're talking about our layer two core. We also have a layer three core where there is not that SLA, right? Guaranteed SLA. So we have both, both options available for customers to pick and choose. Specifically coming back to your China question, uh, for China we have, we specifically have several providers that we've gone with. So we have close to nine pops all over China. And, and what it allows us to do is provide connectivity to China customers for their sites. But also because of these are private application traffic, right? So Google is banned in China, you have the great firewall. But what, what we have is uh, the sites in China connect to the China pop, and from there they traverse over our middle mile, and we have control over what is accessed and what is not accessed. So we don't let them, you know, just because you're on a private network doesn't mean that you have Google access in China, right? Do you get what I'm saying? So we are completely compliant with all the laws, right? We do not, uh, we do not circumvent the Chinese firewall. It's just that we are over a layer two circuit, it's a private circuit, and you're accessing your private apps, which is allowed, right? Okay. And our partners, our colo provider partners, uh, help us with with all the regulatory compliance. Yeah, how to na how to navigate all that? Because I know I know in the SSE space, like this is yeah one of the biggest questions for international organizations that have a presence in China is getting connectivity there. Yep. Um, that's important. So I'm going to switch and specifically get to this. Footprint. So this is a tool called Eagle Eye, right? And this gives you a footprint. This is what our being a provider, we we need to always monitor our network. We need to know exactly how our backbone is doing. So at any point in time, these are these are the links that are connected to. As you can see here, you can hover over this. This is NRT stands for Tokyo. Uh, all our pops are uh, we follow the airport code. Uh, you know, three letters. So you can see here it has. You know, you, you can click on it and see how many links it has. Physical links, uh, backup links, what's the kind of capacity it has, uh, what's the current utilization of it, and so on, right? Uh, here's another view, specifically talking about SLAs. So we have, we have what we call as a certain SLA guarantee, right? So uh, between any two locations, so on the left, on the, on, the, on the rows and the columns, you see all the pops that are named after these cities. And you see what the SLA for, for example, Amsterdam to Ashburn, 125 is the SLA. But you can actually see what's the latency there. Right now, we're actually measuring 80. 
and the expected SLA is 85. So we're actually doing five millisecond better than the SLA. Similarly, you see a lot of these values. These are actually current values. And this is for our mesh one, which we call as our layer two backbone, right? You also have a mesh two, which is the layer three backbone, which is over the internet. The layer, layer two backbone actually gives you that guaranteed application performance because it's first of all layer two, it's not oversubscribed, so you get that guaranteed. Uh, whereas layer three backbone, which we call as mesh two, is over the internet. You don't have the SLAs for packet loss latency and jitter over the internet, right? So this is, this is a comparison of both our layer one and layer two. This is how we're able to stand behind our SLA guarantees for our customers. And, and a good way to visualize that is by going to our MyAreaca platform and, and seeing how that, um, that works. So here is, a, here is an example of, uh, we, have, we, we have a tool called Skynet, which internally monitors these latencies over time. And so here's an example of LHR, which is London to Singapore. And this tells you, you can, you can select it for uh, whatever time period. And you can see here that this latency is being steady at 154 millisecond for the last 30 days. You can, you can select whatever time period you want. And this tells you that this is, this is the boring, consistent middle mile performance that guarantees application performance. Because when you have workloads trying to access data across regions, this really matters a lot, right? And, and you can, I have several examples uh, between any two regions. You can pick any two regions and you'll see that uh, the latency is consistent, very, very reliable. Here's another example. This is CDG, this is Paris. And you can pick, uh, let's say, Beijing, right? And here is consistent latency of that middle mile, which is 129 milliseconds. Are you able to extend that? Because that's a 24 hour interval. Though. Oh yeah, I can, I can select the drop down for last 30 days. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. So any, any, any two cities anywhere in the world where we have POP, we have this infrastructure, this is what our operators, being an operator, we have to stand behind the SLAs. So our support teams uh, are able to guarantee that SLA because we continuously monitor this 24 by seven, 365 days, right? Let me go back to the presentation. The other thing, once we guarantee the performance over the middle mile, uh, we've been looking at, Ariaka is, is a 12 plus year old company. We've been looking at what are the other things that we can guarantee, right? So one of the things is a very, uh, a very popular uh, optimization technique around TCP optimization. Because it's a, it's a middle mile based solution, we break the segment end to end session into three parts, right? The first part is your branch site to the local POP. The second TCP segment is between the two POPs and the third TCP segment is between the destination pop and the uh, destination. So by doing that, your typical three-way handshake is minimized. The time round trip latency for that is minimized. Your overall application gets a LAN-like behavior when it's actually going over the WAN. So it's, it results in end-to-end -end improved user experience, right? Not only that, we also looked at what are the other optimization that we can apply, because being a POP-centric architecture, we know that all the traffic is coming to us, to the POPs. So what we do, what we have is something called as advanced redundancy removal, ARR. This is classic con caching technique, right? So we see, we, see a, we, we see a first pass of data going across our POPs. As soon as we see that data, we fingerprint, index, and write it to our SSD storage. And next time the same pattern goes through, we just send an instruction over to send that instruction over. So it's actually lesser data that gets sent over, over the wire actually, compared to, uh, compared to the sending the whole data, right? So this results in lower utilization of bandwidth. So this is classic WAN optimization. It's been around for years. Uh, Ariaka has, has its own proprietary uh, implementation of this, which we call as ARR. And these are all configured and uh, controlled using optimization rules that we, are, that we centrally manage and push on these POPs. Coming back to our uh, 
to our hardware platform, which we call as the ANAPs or CPE devices that get shipped, we have a wide variety of form factors, all the way supporting you know, as low as 10 Mbps DIA links, all the way up to 10 gig DIA links. So you have the higher end ANAPs that can take in 10 gig circuits, and you have the lower end ANAPs that can take uh, 10 Mbps or, or lower uh, circuit speeds. We also have a virtual version of our ANAPs. These are virtualized instances that you can spin up in AWS or Azure, and you can bring up your ANAPs so that now your end-to-end -end connectivity all the way to the public cloud is also optimized and gets the great Ariaka benefit. Finally, our multi-cloud connectivity using our um, uh, using uh, uh, solutions such as the Fabric, we can actually extend our connectivity all the way to AWS Azure through Express Route, Direct Connect, or over plain IPsec. We also do SaaS optimization, what we call uh, as uh, taken Office 365 traffic that's coming, uh, and we transport it over the middle mile, and we hand it off to the closest uh, Office 365 region that the customer's uh, workload resides on. We do optimizations for UCAS. So because of our guaranteed middle mile, we are able to guarantee that performance. And UCAS is one application which benefits a lot by having, having that consistent performance over the middle mile. So we have uh, UCAS acceleration solutions for 8x8, Fuse, Ring Central, a whole host of providers. So you, you don't have, you're not sitting in AWS's data center, for example. You're, but you're, you, you get close to that yes. direct connect circuit. It's like the, you plumb it up at Equinix, yep. whatever, and get, yep. get close that way. They're in a cage in Equinix. They're in an adjacent cage in Equinix. Right. Leverage the fabric to connect. Yep. Okay. But if you're ranked in Equinix, then you can just yeah. come from one cage to another. And yeah. There you go. So as you can see, that pretty much summarizes, if you were to look at uh, how does Ariaka really differentiate itself, uh, there's, there's two axes that you can consider. One is, you know, how much of a control do you have over the underlay? Because we, we have those circuits, those wavelengths, and those dark fibers that we control, we have complete control over that underlay. You're not going to get that with any other SD-WAN provider, which is just an overlay solution over the internet, right? So that's why our customers love us because they are able to sleep peacefully at night because they are able to guarantee that application performance. They're not, they know that they're not going to get that 2 a.m. call and uh, you know, wake them up, right? The other aspect about is the agility. So if you take the agility, a typical SD-WAN is a, is a DIY, DIY box with a telco provider you're not going to get that agility of service. Ariaka's support is, is why our customers love us, because we are there, we are able to quickly turn around, triage issues, you know, do custom uh, requirements for customers, and that's, that's exactly what differentiates us. So if you see here, you have overlay vendors on the, on the left, and you have Ariaka at the top right, you have incumbent telcos and DIY, which are typically you know, DIY plays, right? You take a, a, a a vendor box and you try and configure it and optimize it and, and run it yourself versus Ariaka is a fully managed service, we do it for you uh, completely. So in, in conclusion, I would just like to say that, you know, if you take a typical infrastructure, if you play the infrastructure Jenga game, you have uh, the CPE router, you have a, a, a van optimizer box like a riverhead appliance, you have the firewall, all of that can be compressed and into one Ariaka device because we can run the NFV to run your firewall. Very soon we'll have our native firewall capability running on the ANAPs. We have the optimization that's built into the ANAPs as well as the POPs, and you have uh, your SD-WAN. So you got all the pieces of the Jenga thing. That's yep. there, right? Yep. Okay, good. I, I do have a question around traffic flow, j just to make sure I'm thinking of this right. So let's say, I've got multiple remote locations and I also have an on-premises data center because I have a lot of applications data that are still centralized there. My remote Ariaka devices are not creating direct tunnels to that data center, correct? They're connecting to the POPs and then yes. that data is going across the POPs back. And that's that's the big advantage with Ariaka. You have one, one pair of Ike V2 tunnels to manage because the ANAP actually builds one primary tunnel and a secondary tunnel to the POP as opposed to any other solution where if you have, you have the classic n into n minus one by two problem, right? If you have five sites, you know, you, you, you need to have 20 tunnels that to manage tunnels, that, yeah. right? Okay, that makes sense. So with Ariaka, you just have two tunnels. Is it fair to say that you're a service provider, except that you don't do last mile? 
we mm. we're we're not as we we own our IP. So these these in apps and the and the software stack that runs on our pops are all Ariaka IP that's been developed over the years. So we're not a classic AT and T that takes a Cisco box or a Velo box and stitches together a solution mm -hmm. and is a service provider. We're not that. We we own our own IP. So you deploy virtually. We deploy virtually too. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, we we are, you can come to us as well for last mile circuits, right? So you can. Yeah, you can buy your own circuits. You and you have your own circuits. You connect them to our pop, or you come to Ariaka single stop shop. We have customers saying yes. If you want to be the service provider of us, we like your technology, but then you have to go the last mile <laughs> as well and sell all the circuits as well. So we sell you the circuits like the DIAs typically, and as well broadband. So you'll resell it. Some, yeah, then we resell it. Yeah, we yeah. are, you know, the nice word for it is a global aggregator, right? So we can, wherever you are, wherever your site, your location is, we take care of the problem to get you a circuit. But your service really starts at the cloud adjacent Equinix switch, whatever. No, forward. so if you, yes, yeah, so for example, if you come, you want us to connect to IS, we have those direct connects, they are on demand, right? Mm -hmm. They are there. Now, if they connect branch offices, and they say, we want to have uh, DIA or broadband or even 4G, 5G, we will provide it to, to you. So we have the, and we have the management with it because we know what of these circuits happens. We marry these circuits as well. For example, if we know at the inside, uh, we have, let's say, to use our layer three core and they use Sprint as an example, then we will match it as well as it can with the first mile circuit coming in to the pop which is on Sprint. So we are doing the thing and you get integrated monitoring. If you buy a last mile circuit, you get as well a higher SLA because you buy it end to end. And we take care of all the logistics across the globe. And from a support standpoint, if we're getting the circuits through Ariaka, Ariaka handles the billing. If yeah, they're one, throat every, choke, one throat to choke, one bill. Last mile, it's all yes. everything. Okay. And, yeah. if, and if you buy your last mile from Ariaka, you get, you get to see your circuit health also through the same MyAreaka portal that you're seeing your sites and your network. And, and you know, Anu will walk you through the demo, which will actually has a use case of last mile okay. as well. Well, that one I can see it is an added value though, that, that you can see the, the circuits usually when you have to get the last mile and you're told, ah, oh, sorry, we don't manage that part, so we need to ask the other two to provide us some stats and similar stuff. Yeah. So, so if you look at it, the last mile business, global customers, it's really resolve a painful issue of logistics and coordinating this, right? The last mile business. Now, if you, of course, you have customers who are in the US only, then they may, they may go with us, they may go with, with somebody else. I have one follow-up question. So obviously understanding the benefit of not having multiple tunnels going everywhere, going to your primary, secondary. If you have a customer that is not wanting to chain in any additional services, really is going for more of the traditional you know, SD-WAN approach, but wants encryption end-to-end, -end, they don't want you know, any concerns about, I'm going on your backbone unencrypted. How are you supporting that? Can you support end-to-end so, -end encryption? So one, you're, you're always encrypted okay. over the box. You're always encrypted. If you, are, you want to do something side-to-side -side with a device you know, in one site and a device other site, we support site-to-site -site connectivity. So you don't need to go through the pop. The management still lives in the pop, but we have those models we support okay. that as well. So you have the flexibility to decide whether I want to go direct. Right. You don't have to go through the right. But most of the people will end up with the pop-centric model where all the traffic goes over the pop. Because even in the pop-centric model, it's always encrypted. Even over the middle mile, it's encrypted. Okay. Right. I want to push back on a, that a bit. You said that you terminate the three-way handshake locally and split the connect the encryption up into three. So there is a yep. very small interval on your equipment where you are unencrypted. It is not end to end. It's not tra traversing any network yeah, unencrypted, but it is getting that's decrypted correct. and re-encrypted yeah, on your box. And yeah, that matters correct. from a compliance perspective, yes. not yeah. really a tactical perspective. Yeah. Um, and you can bypass that, by the way. If you want, you can bypass that. You can do end-to-end -end encryption, but, but still ride your... Of course, you don't get the optimization. So if you that want the, the TCP question, optimization, yeah. you, you are basically doing that, although it is the same compute, same memory, etc., right? But yes, absolutely, you do that, the, the decrypt, encrypt. Now, if you want to bypass it, yes, absolutely, we have. Okay, that's a good option. Appreciate that. Thank you.